YouTube, what's happening is Sunday, June 23rd. There are 14 games in baseball to talk about today. As you can see, both of the LA teams are off today for some reason. So this is the going to be the intro screen going forward, part of the model now that spits out the schedule for me. Love this setup. It makes it a lot easier on me too. Also, yesterday went seven and seven. Not the best day, not, not a bad day. Overall, just a decent day. So I'm going to have its own screen dedicated completely to the betting. It's going to have all the bets, kind of like this game, day by day. You can see how I did, and you can see it'll have trend lines. It'll have all that fun stuff on there. Still a work in progress, obviously. So uh, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't. Let's go ahead and jump into that first game of the day. All right, first up, we have Arizona and Philly. You can see neither team's really on a win streak right now. We have Sikoni going out there with his 2-5 and five record. As you can see, there's a spot for hands on here. I know everybody wants left-handed, right-handed first batters. I'm working on it. So still trying to get the tweaks. It, it, I had it going, but it broke today, so I had to take it off. So you see it's coming. So two and five with Sacconi, four and three with Sanchez. You can see the advantages now on based on their stats. We put innings, ERA, their whip, how many strikeouts per game, how many walks per game, how many hits per game. I was going to do home runs, but the, all the numbers are pretty close. I didn't really want to put that one on there. So, And as you can see, I know I got a lot of hate in the comments. <laughs> I took the nerf y'all for one day, and some people had meltdowns. I, I get you here. It is it, Not only is it back, it is better. As you can see, 44.3% nerfy. And I put the last three games and the last game nerfy, so you can see how they've been doing nerfy. I even put the yerfy on there. The color coding, red and yellow. Red, uh-uh, pass orange or yellow whatever you want to call it maybe depending on the pitching matchups and the batting situations green is a go we're going on green so you can see here these are the nerfy yerfy setups moving forward to the odds we can see philly is pretty much a heavy favorite at home totals are nine and a half across the board batting side you can see philly has the advantage in the bats they were getting six runs in a game in the last three versus 3.7 it was 12-1 yesterday 267 versus 238, uh, 389 yesterday versus 0.6069. Arizona struggled yesterday and strikeouts. So we have Philly with a massive advantage there. Pitching wise, we have Sanchez going out there. You can see his most recent games has not faced Arizona, but you can see his games. You can see he's pretty good. His worst game was against Boston. Outside of that, nothing to complain about. Looking over Sigoni over here. He has not faced Philly, but he got roughed up against the Angels, got roughed up against the Dodgers, got roughed up against Cincy. He gives up runs. That's what he does. So going back to the odds, we see Philly's minus 200 for good reason. But, uh, I mean, that's something we're taking. That's easily a good spot to take. Maybe even run line in this one. I'll probably do that instead. I'll probably take Philly money line and put something on the run line as well. Mm, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Because I don't want to take the total in this one because of this. Arizona's offense is struggling mightily. Philly's doing quite well. So, yeah, we're not even going to take Philly money line. We'll put them in a parlay. We'll take Philly run line and move on to the next game. Second game, we got the Braves and the Yankees. We've got Free with a 6 and 3 record against Cortez with his 4 and 5 record. 311 ERA against 336. You can see the stats here that kind of lean Atlanta more than anything. Nerfy 48.2, pass. Yurphy 7.6, pass. Moving on over to the odds, we see it's basically a pick them as it probably should be. Eight and a half and nines across the board. Looking at the data, we see last game was eight to three. The Yankees yesterday, 4.7 last three versus 6.0. So still advantage Atlanta in the overall runs. And eight, 283 versus 200. Even though Yankees won, they're still bat, their batting average is only 200 in the last three games. So they're still struggling a little bit, even though they got eight runs yesterday. That might be a one-off. That's why we put the one time on there to see what they do one time. So... And strikeouts, they're not, nothing really stands out in the strikeout area. Looking over at the pitching, we have Cortez coming out here. His 3.36 with a 1 0 whip has not faced the Braves recently. You can see pretty decent games. LA is the worst game he's had. He gave up four runs, two against KC, three against San Fran, gem against Baltimore. Uh, Freed over here. Where he came down. Here you are. 311 with a 107. You can see his most recent games has not faced the Yankees. Nothing really stands out. He also had four, but it was against Baltimore in this one. So we have two pretty decent pitchers. That's what we expected. They're both good pitchers. We have two good pitchers. We have Atlanta's offense outside of yesterday. It's still pretty good. Yankees, they're, they had one good game. We'll see if that trends to more good games. I personally... Eight and a half and nine seems a little high for this one to me. Even though we have good pitching, I can't really take an under in this one. So 
to me, I can't really pick a side either in this one. I'm just going to pass on this entire game and move on to the next one. Next up, we got Tampa Bay and Pitt. You can see the records. Nothing really stands out on the streaks. It's Savale versus Skeens. 5-4-2 versus a 2 2 9 You can see Skeens has all the advantages here, obviously. Nerfy, Yurfy, both in the red. That's not what we're doing. We're going to pass on those. Looking at the odds, we have Pittsburgh decently favored as they should be. Total, 7.5 at 8 across the board. Uh, you pick your poison there, which you want. Batting side, we see that Tampa 6.7 runs in their last three. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh 2.7. Tampa 295 versus 151. So we see Tampa's offense is doing good. Their last game, they only had three runs. Pittsburgh had four runs. They won the game. So it was a lot less than they should be. Pittsburgh is turning up. Tampa's turning down, but it's only been one game. So we'll see how they do. Uh, Strikeout-wise, Screens is pitching, so it's going to influence a little bit, especially when Tampa struck out 10 times yesterday, nine in their last, averaging in their last three. Skeens is pitching. You'll we'll probably take a Skeens strikeout prop because he just seems to strike out eight or nine dudes every time, apparently. So popping over to the pitching. Let's start with Skeens here. 229 with a .99 whip. You can see his stats has not faced Tampa Bay recently. 7, 8, 8, 9, 3, 11. I took his k pop last time it was seven and a half and he only got seven so because you know he's only going to pitch six innings he's not going to go more than six they're not trying to kill his arm in the first year so uh, if you have something that's stupid high like seven and a half eight and a half pass on it there's the chances you hit it are going to be much higher because you know he's not going seven innings because he's not he's not going to do it so other than that great, great games gave up three against the dodgers but outside of that we know he's been great his counterparts of value on the other hand five four two the one three nine has not faced Pittsburgh, but you can see the stats. Four earned, four earned, two, four. He's going to give up a couple runs here and there. Going back to the batting, we see Tampa has a slight advantage. If you go by yesterday, there is no advantage, but the last three, there's an advantage. Back to the odds, we see Pittsburgh pretty decently favored in this one. I don't really want to pick a side. I just don't. Nothing is standing out here. I am going to, I got to look at skiing strikeout props. That's another page I'm going to start adding this actual props on here for everybody to see. So instead of me having to go do it later, I can do it live right now. So um, I'm going to look at skiing strikeout props. Don't trust Pittsburgh's bats. I, he's going to have great pitching, but I don't trust their bats. Uh, Tano's offense is still hot. He's, he's a rookie. Rookies are rookies. He's eventually going to have a bad game. Let's be honest. He's not going to have a great game every single time. So I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to look at Skeen Stargo props and just move on to the next game. Next up, we got Boston and Cincinnati. We got Kelly with his 175 up against Lodolo with his 276. Um, we see Nerfies on here. Neither one's worth it. Uh, Boston seems to have a slight advantage in some of the stats. So Kelly has a slight advantage pitching. Looking over at the odds, we see that Cincinnati is pretty decently favored at home over Boston. Total is nine and a half across the board. Looking at batting, we see that both teams are about the same. Boston slightly better in runs, slightly better in averages. Strikeouts about the same. Nothing. You can see the trend lines are about the same. Nothing's really standing out except for since he batted really well yesterday, 297. Still puts him at 198 in their last three games. Still not that great. So still have Boston advantages on the on the offense here looking at pitching we got kelly first with a 175 with a 0.94 looking at his game log you can see he's pitched a lot because he is a bullpen dude he is this is a bullpen game for boston hence the reason why they are an underdog but he does not give up any runs so he, he's really good for no runs in the first inning so um on the other hand 276 one game log we see the numbers here. We can see he only gives up a couple here and there. Outside of the San Fran game, he gave up four. The only thing I am looking at is we don't... There's not much of an advantage here when it comes to the offense. Pitching, Lodolo, you got Lodolo's numbers here. You can see how he does. He's not faced Boston, but you can see these numbers are really good. We're, we know we're going to get out of him. Boston, we know what we're going to get for one inning. But outside of one inning, we know nothing. We don't know who they're going to throw out there. So outside is one, maybe two innings. We don't know what we're getting. So this game makes it really hard to cap. This is why since he's such a heavy favorite at home, the total's nine and a half because nobody knows. They just threw it up there. There's nothing pointing to this. So when you have bullpen games, it's just wise to pass. I'm going to do that. Pass, move on to the next one. Next up, we got Seattle and Miami. We got Miller with his 3-4-6 up against Tyler with his 4-5-0. Tyler's only pitched two innings, so we don't really know much about him. Nerfy, Yurfy, both in the red. We're not really going to look at those. 
odds we see that seattle is pretty heavily favored on the road totals are seven and a half across the board looking at the batting we see that seattle has the advantage still when it comes to offense and runs and in batting average strikeouts they're doing better they're not 30th anymore they're 12th in the last three games only eight strikeouts a game only struck out nine times the last game so they're doing better let's give seattle some props good job guys so they have the advantage on the runs they have the advantage on the batting average Pitching, Miller's going out there. You can see he's a 3 4 6 with a 1 on 1. Has not faced Miami recently. You can see the stats. His worst game was definitely against KC. He gave a 7. He gave a 5 against the Yankees, but 2 7 2. Gem against the White, it's the White Sox, but it's still a gem. Gem against the Angels. He's, so he's, you know, he's either going to pitch a gem or he's going to give us some runs. This dude is the epitome of a roller coaster. Tyler, on the other hand, look at his, look, let's look at his stats. Just one, just one stat. One game, two innings, one hit, one earned run. No home runs, though. Uh, you know, bright spots where they are. So he's going to pitch two innings. This is going to be a bullpen game as well, most likely for Miami is what it looks like. So just like the last one, when you have that, you, you see the Seattle has the advantage. Seattle has the money line. Miami's rolling out a bullpen game. This one, uh, I took. I didn't take the last one because the, the advantages were for the bullpen team. I don't trust a bullpen pitcher with the advantage in offense. This one, the bullpen team has a disadvantage. So we have Seattle advantage offense. Seattle has the advantage in pitching, and they're favored. So I am going to take Seattle for sure. Um, they're going to money line parlay. We'll even throw a little bit mm, plus right at plus money for a run line, huh? Yep, I think we're going to do that. We're going to take Seattle run line and money line in a parlay and move on to the next one. Next up, we got Toronto and Cleveland. Toronto's on a five-game losing streak. Cleveland's on a four-game winning streak. That's something to note. Kikuchi's going out there with a 3.65 ERA. McKenzie's going out there with a 4.48 ERA. But Toronto has the advantages in pitching between strikeouts a game, walks a game, hits, and whatnot, as you can see. Only thing, McKenzie is better when it comes to giving up hits. Nervy, 57.25, not good enough. Even though we got Toronto, Toronto's doing better. They're only 84% when they're on the road. So they're a little bit better at home. Uh, higher percent for Nervy. Yurfy, 4.98, terrible. Pass on the Yurfy. Looking at the odds we see is basically a pick them across the board in this one. And we have totals of eight and a half and nines out there. Batting wise, we see Toronto is still struggling. They got worse, even more worse than their last game. Three runs, batted 138. They're in the bottom 10 in the majors when it comes to batting average they're 26 for 2.3 runs in their last three games cleveland is doing better their batting average is in the middle of the pack runs in the top 10 their last three got six runs yesterday strikeouts toronto's a little bit worse than cleveland but nothing really stands out in strikeouts pitching we got mckenzie going out there for cleveland with a 448 with a 146 looking at the game log you can see that has not faced toronto recently Four earned, two earned, five earned, four earned, three earned, two gives up runs. That's all it is. He has slight advantage in hits, but he gives up runs. So, Gucci on the other hand, we've seen dude gets blown up sometimes. His last game, Boston gone for five. Pitched great against Milwaukee, which is usually the team that puts up five spots on people, but not this one. Four for one against Baltimore. Pittsburgh blew him up. Detroit blew him up. Yeah, two against the White Sox is... Mm, it's a white slot. It should be zero, probably. So you can see we have two pitchers that are inclined to give up runs. We have Cleveland's offense is doing well. Toronto's offense, eh, not so much. But we have one offense is doing better. The odds, we have eight and a half out there, nines. To me, I think one of these pitchers is going to get lit up in this one. Um, Toronto's lost five in a row. They're due to break that streak anytime. I don't like do theories, but the, it could happen. We know Toronto has the dudes that can put up the offense. They're just struggling a little bit. So having a pitcher like McKenzie roll up in there, perfect little just treat for them to try to break out their slump. So I'm going to take the over eight and a half in this one. I'm not going to take a side. I don't trust McKenzie. I can't back that. And I don't trust Kukuji right now because he's been getting rocked. So give me the over of eight and a half. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we got the White Sox and the Tigers. They're both new. The ones on a really street to talk about. Cannon with a 3 3 4, uh, had a gem in his last game. Uh, Olsen with a 3 3 9 going out there. Still advantages lean Detroit in most of the categories pitching. Nervy, it's in the yellow, orange, whatever color you want to call it. It is 62.4. So we will look at some pitchers and some offense to see if this is a nerf we want to take. 4.2 on the Nervy's a pass. Looking at batting. We see that both teams are struggling when it comes to scoring runs. We took a Nerfie two days ago when this one hit, so this might be another one worth looking at. Both runs a game. They're combining for four runs a game in the last three games. That's not good. They had It was one to five yesterday. 
238 versus 194. Detroit's offense is just terrible right now. Chicago isn't much better, but it is in Detroit bad. So, and strikeouts, they're the same. They got nine yesterday. They're both right around nine and seven point seven. So, looking at these stats, we'll just look at the pitching closer to see if we really want to take that nerfy. We start with Cannon. His last few games, you can see he pitched a gem against Houston, which was correctly predicted i said watch there's this is a game chicago win and they won because this dude right here this man balled out he was the reason that's it other than that uh has not faced detroit seattle did a great game three innings against boston was good back in april because that's april that ain't may so dude was out for a month and you can see why dude got raw he comes back and just on a mission to hurt people so he's doing good olsen on the other hand three three nine one two nine you can see his recent games, he did four hits, six against Atlanta. That's impressive. That's good. Got 10 hits and four against Washington, 12 hits and eight against Milwaukee, six and five against Boston. He was awful for three straight games, and now all of a he's pitching the gym. Something clicked, maybe. Who knows? So based on this, Olsen is, we can see Olsen has it. He had three rough games before that he was good. We, we see Cannon's been on fire since he got here with the offense being this terrible and the nerfy sitting at 62 percent you can see they've hit three straight nerfies they both have so i'm gonna rock with the nerfy in this one we're definitely taking a nerfy looking back at the odds itself detroit is a heavy favorite i don't know why i can't see why they should be 180 in this one especially are you going to put your harder money on detroit backing this offense if you are you need to call the number call it right now just stop watching this go call the number because Mm -mm. nobody should be back in this right now so to me i'm passing on everything in this game we're gonna do the six quick outs and move on to the next game next up we got baltimore and houston baltimore two game losing streak houston four game winning streak suarez with his 205 going out there against valdez with his 391 you can see suarez pretty much has the advantage in most things except for strikeouts you can see he's not a strikeout dude so nerfies close to 60 but still red yurfies 3.7 not good enough pass odds we see houston's a slight favorite on the home Eight and a half is your total across the board. Batting, we see both teams are, or they were on fire outside of yesterday because when you were one and two and runs per game in their last three, that leans over and all of a sudden the offense is probably taking a day off. So one run versus five, that was the final score. That was wild. Either way, it's baseball. It happens. You're not going to win every game. So still, they batted terribly yesterday. I don't, when you're this hot for both teams for two straight weeks, I don't think one game is really going to matter. So that's to me as an outlier. We ignore the outliers. Now that becomes two games in a row, three games. That's obviously going to affect the averages. So um, strikeouts, they didn't strike out though. They did pretty good. So I still think both offenses are pretty hot. They just had an off day yesterday. So looking over at the pitching, we see Suarez is going out there with 205. The 120 has not faced Houston recently. Six for three, 4052. Dude has good numbers. He don't pitch that many innings. You know, you might get four or five. You might get three. We don't know what we're going to get. He He's not bad. So, Valdez, on the other hand, he will pitch innings. 391, 121. Had a not a complete game. Four hitter against LA. Five running against San Fran and only four innings. Two against Chicago and six. So, you see what we get. He got roughed up bad against LA back in June and 6 3 against Seattle. So, he's up and down here. So, we know what we get. Uh, so I would say there's not much of an advantage either side in pitching, batting, both offenses are hot. So to me, eight and a half, I'm taking eight and a half. That's what I'm doing. I'm not taking a side. I'm taking over, over. I'm going to take over eight and a half in this one and we'll move on to the next game. Next up, San Fran, St. Louis. San Fran's on a four game losing streak. That's worth noting. Webb and his 299 are going up there against Gray with his 295. Gray has advantages in all categories, except he's a little more generous when it comes to walking people. So, Nerfie's at 65%. That's something worth looking at. Yurfie, 3.7. You can see both teams on their Nerfie. They did not hit the Nerfie last game. And you can see how they've hit when they played recently. So, on their side not total just on their side so bouncing over to the total uh, odds we see that st louis is a slight favorite over under sevens with a one seven and a half out there batting wise st louis has the advantage and with the bats they are six point run six point oh runs again in the last three versus 4.7 they're batting 297 versus 260 last three so they have the advantage slightly albeit offensively Pitching wise, Gray's out there with a 295 of the 102. We saw he has a slight advantage in his actual categories, but you could look at the recent games here. You can see has not really 
done anything bad. Philly for fours is worst game. It's Philly. Philly's been hot in the month of June. So it's kind of like, okay, you got, they got you a little bit, whatever. Two for three against Colorado. Four for one for Pitt. Five for two Miami. Nothing is really, this worst game was his LA game down here. Way down here. These two games were his worst games, but he's been done better since. But if I have to scroll down to find your worst games, I don't care about them anymore because that was a month ago. So Webb, on the other hand, 299 with a 119. You can see his recent games has not faced St. Louis. Two, three, two, four, zero. He's probably going to give a couple runs. That's what he's done all June. Could he come out and do a seven, three hit? Nothing. He could very easily, but he's more inclined to give up two or three runs. That's what he does. So, and you can see Gray has to face Sanford either. Forgot about that part. So, looking at the offenses, St. Louis has the advantage. Gray has a slight advantage in pitching. The pick, it's almost a pick em in this one. It's really hard to judge in this one. Over unders are hard to judge. To me, too many things are just too close in this one. I'm going to pass on this one completely and move on to the next game. Right, next up, we've got a fun one. we got KC and Texas. Texas on a three-game win streak. AC's on a two-game losing streak. Marsh in his 4-3-7s going against Scherzer and making his season debut. So this skews the numbers completely to the point my bottle breaks. So it's like we don't know anything. So this is like a dude making his first start. A bunch of NAs across the board. It says NA for the advantage, but really Marsh has the advantage because even though it is Scherzer, let's give him credit, Scherzer's good. But it's his first game of the year. We don't know what we get. It was just like with the guy from the Yankees last week. It was like, okay, we know he's good, but what does he do? He he had a decent game. That's what we expected out of him. But we want to see that before we make any actual betting judgments on him. Because we're betting on dudes blindly if we don't know how they pitch. Because he's coming back from injury. We don't know what he's going to do. We got to see it. So this one, Nervy 60.6 is highlighted here in the orange. They both, uh, Nervy hit last time. 4.8 on the year piece of pass. We'll look at the batting side. We see that Kansas City's offense is terrible. These lines are, ooh, they are down, all of them. So Texas, top, they're 11th in runs at 517. 233 batting is not good, but it ain't Kansas City bad. So Texas has an advantage with their offense. The pitching, we'll look at them, but you can't look at anything with Herzer. Marsh, on the other hand, he got rocked against Oakland of all teams, rocked him. So. He got four against Seattle, five against San Diego, five against Minnesota. He gave up a bunch of runs. Scherzer, his last game was October. So, I mean, he three, two, you know, that's what he had. So, we don't really know what we're going to get out of him. We got to see it. I do anyways. I'm not betting on somebody, so I at least see how they start the season off. Because we don't know how his offseason went. We don't know what he did, his rehab, all this other stuff. So, to me... Yeah, I, you can back Texas all you want if you want to back somebody you've never seen pitch this season. So I'm not going to do that. We pass on that all day, every day. So this game, 100% pass. Move on to the next one. All right, Washington, Colorado. Neither team's on a streak. Washington has Irving going out with a 3-2-4. Colorado has <laughs> Freeland with a 13.2 going out there with his 15 innings of work. You can see Nerfie's 52 is a pass. Nerfie's a pass. Odds. Both, it's a pick them pretty much. Washington slightly favored. Over-unders, 10.5 and, and 11s in this one. Batting, you can see most recent games. You can see 7 versus 8 was the score yesterday. 6.7 versus 5 on the runs. Washington slight advantage. 315 versus 279 on batting average. Slight Washington advantage, but still both teams top 10 in batting average. Uh, Colorado striking out more. That's the only thing that's really standing out here, but both offenses are still trending up. Washington slight advantage overall. Pitching side, Freeland's going out there with his massive ERA. Got he's only pitched a few games this year, and they were all back in April. So you can see four, two, seven, and then ten, ten, ten <laughs> back in March against Arizona. So you can see what he has. Again, this is just like Scherzer in the last one. We don't know what we're going to get. He has not pitched since April, so that makes things are really difficult to see what we're going to do here. Irving, on the other hand, you can see his recent games has not faced Colorado. Good games overall, but nothing I can do. I can't back a side when I... Now, with well, this one, hmm, hmm, I'm, I'm arguing with myself now. The Fat Washington's favorite, they have the offense. Freeland's pitching his first game since April 14th, so that really stands out. I'm going to take Washington money line. They have the offense advantage. I'm going to take their money line. I don't, I don't want to mess with that total. I, Irving could shut Colorado down, but... Freeland might get rocked in his first game back, so we'll see. Washington money line, 
minus 125 out there is nice and we'll move on to the next game next up minnesota oakland neither team's on a streak to worry about lopez what is five six three he's going up against harris what is two three seven you can see your at 60.7 percent we'll look and see if we want to do a nerfy or not your fees red does pass odds we see minnesota heavily favored on the road eight eight hash and totals across the board batting minnesota's offense is still on fire seven runs a game their last three for fourth they got 10 yesterday four for three ten their last three so you can see they're on fire oakland's struggling a little bit when it comes to their runs so we have a minnesota pretty heavy advantage looking at the offenses uh, we see harris going out there with two three seven to one one two has not faced minnesota outside of his four game against texas pretty decent numbers not bad at all lopez on their hand can't say the same five two seven one six seven do gives up runs like he's handing out candy at halloween he's giving them out that much so we have a massive advantage in my opinion pitching for oakland but we have a massive advantage in batting for minnesota when you have those two they cancel out because i can't back either side because one side might ruin it for them so to make this quick and easy this game is a pass move on to the next one next game milwaukee san diego Milwaukee's on a three-game losing streak. San Diego four-game winning streak. Myers with his three-two-six going up against King with his three-four-nine. You can see Milwaukee slight advantage in pitching in those. Nerfy five fifty-four point four. That's a pass. Looking over at the odds, we see that San Diego is a slight favorite at home across the board. Seven and a half eights are out there. Batting, San Diego is better offensively, but not by a lot. But they're a little bit yes. Seven point three is five on the runs. Their last three three thirty-three batting versus two eighty in the last three. Milwaukee's not bad but they're not san diego good and strikeouts you can see both teams are now are doing better milwaukee last three is at 10.3 so that's something to look at pitching wise myers is going out there with a 326 with a 113 you see his recent games he has not faced milwaukee recently so four hits against the angels three for one against serrano it's eight any gem against detroit he got roughed up against the white Sox, but outside of that he's been pretty good king on the other hand Great game, two, zero, one, one, three. But we got two really good pitchers, put it that way. Two good pitchers, two pretty decent offenses. The totals, seven and a half, eight. I can't touch that. When you both sides are doing pretty good pitching and offense, it's really hard to pick a side. I'm going to leave the side alone. I'm going to leave the total alone. We're going to pass and move on to the next game. All right, last game, Sunday Night Baseball, Mets and Cubs. We have Severino with a 3-8-4 up against Assad with a 2-7-9. Nerfy, Yerfy, both red. That's a pass. Odds, we have it. Cubs is a slight favorite. Basically, a pick them. Eight, seven and a half, eight and a half. All the choices are out there on the boards. Betting side, you can see there's no advantage. They both got five runs a game in the last three. It was eight to one yesterday for the cubs they did get their win uh batting wise averages mets are falling off a cliff offensively when well, tr the cubs are trending up so now we have the cubs favorite offensively versus the mets pitching side severino's going out there last game texas rocked him hard miami 7-1 washington 7-1 hasn't faced the cubs recently but you can see arizona san fran miami you can see what he did here Assad has not faced the mets recently Pretty good numbers. One, since he got him for five, two, four, two. He's going to give up a couple runs. Severino's going to give up one. If he's either going to give up one, he's going to give up three or four. So that's, he's not going to be at that two, three range. It's going to be one to, when I say three or four, more like four to six, probably with him. So this one's a little, both these pitchers are kind of roller coasters. Assad's more consistent that he's going to give up runs. So that's a little better to look at. Back to the offense as we see their middle of the road. Mets are struggling. Cubs are not. They both give up runs. Ooh. I think since it is out there, there's a seven and a half out there at my book of all books. I'm going to take over seven and a half in this one. We're going to rock with the offense. We know the Mets offense has been on fire up until they're starting to downtrend. Cubs are starting to trend up. So we'll take the over seven and a half for Sunday Night Baseball. And that's it. All right, that's it. All 14 games broken down. But here's a quick recap. First game, you're going to. This game's already on by the time you see this video. But I said Philly run line, Philly money line on a parlay. We're passing on ATL New York. We're going to take just Skeen's K prop. We're going to look at it. We got to find it first. I got to start adding K props to this so I can actually take them live with you. Um, but that's all we're looking at in that game. We're passing on Boston Cincy. Uh, Seattle, we're going to take money line and run line over Miami. Toronto, Cleveland, we're going the over eight and a half. Chicago and Detroit, we're going to rock with that nerfy. Baltimore, Houston, over eight and a half. 
San Fran, St. Louis is a pass. Casey, Texas is a pass. Minnesota, Oakland is a pass. Milwaukee, San Diego is a pass. Washington, Colorado, Washington, money line. And then the over seven and a half in the nightcap with the Mets and the Cubs. So drop comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're taking. Make sure I don't miss anything. Give me some more suggestions because your suggestions is what's making me make all these changes and add things, subtract things here and there. So otherwise, either wise, either wise, that's not even a word. I've been talking so much. So anyway, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.